you think that it's just because it's getting cold in America that the trail gets cold. The portal slows down, kind of hits this weird. Oh, that's all a lie. It's actually heating up. It's ramping up. Georgia's seen 16, 17 guys hitting that portal. Guess what? We got some dudes coming in and Mm -hmm. some dudes yet to be announced. And you're going to like it. We're going to talk about that next on Locked on Bulldogs. You are Locked on Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked on Bulldogs podcast. I am Daniel. He is Clint. Thanks so much for making us your first listen. Today, Prize Picks is bringing you this episode and we love them and um, we we will get to them more later in the show. But Clint, let's let's jump right in. Okay. And you mentioned the portal in in the open. We're going to talk about the portal. Georgia's got a, a... All reports are a talented wide receiver coming into the portal. Do people like talented wide receivers? I don't know. For the University of Georgia, is that is that something people seem to be keen on? Um, Georgia also got some. I'm going to call it news. I'm going to call it news about people playing in the bowl game. Yeah, a little bit of a little bit of an eye opener. Carson Beck spoke to the media. And he did confirm he's going to be playing in the bowl game. He stopped Daniel, short okay, quick, of saying other things. We're going to talk about him later okay. in the show. But we're going well, to because just really quick, to, yeah. really quick, really uh, quick, uh, playing in a bowl game this year can help your your draft stock for this year. Clint, no one's okay. asking you to speak about this subject matter right now. It's for the third just, segment. It's when we're going to talk about that. Okay. Um, right now, we are going yeah. to talk about... Um, I, I think a move that's more significant than any of these things, right? Uh, I mean, Daniel and I have yet to talk about this move, so I'm actually really into, I'm anticipating how he's setting this up and how he's framing this conversation. I'm saying a a position coaching hire at the University mm-hmm. of Georgia is a is a is a move that is more important than any portal news that you could hear. Yes, sir. there is no player that could outweigh the impact of a of a new position coach. And Georgia does have a new position coach. Obviously, Fran Brown goes to Syracuse, which, by the way, hello, Syracuse. Is um, Syracuse going to win the ACC next year? Glenn? It's on this right now. If you all think that Syracuse shouldn't be watched next year, you go ahead Fran, and get eyeballs this year on Syracuse. Fran Brown ain't trying to mess around one bit Syracuse will have a better starting quarterback next year than Ohio State because they will have Ohio State's quarterback and Ohio State won't be able to replace him with anybody better um but Fran Brown gone so Georgia needs a DB's coach they go to the west coast and they get Dante Williams now he's been all over the place but but he's been on the west coast a lot right he's most recently the D uh, the defensive coach for the USC Trojans um, uh, was at Oregon before that has mm-hmm. got several stops on the resume. And so uh, it's a, it's an interesting hire. It's not a name that I don't think any of it us is. were hearing moving in, like going into this process, but Kirby makes the move. He gets the guy and, um, it's Dante Williams. So Clint, I will just ask you right off the top. What do you think about this move? Do you like it? Do you not like it? And why? In no uncertain terms, let me be so crystal clear as I possibly can. Okay. You might be thinking to yourself, who is this man? You might be thinking to yourself, USC had the worst defense in the entire nation. Lincoln Riley don't care about that. Okay, those are those are true things. This is a grand slam, perfect position hire for Kirby Smart. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. What Really quick, Daniel. Many mm-hmm. people get on Kirby. Because he just gets five stars and four stars, but can't develop them. Sure. What if I were to tell you that of all position coaches in the nation, the most ties to five-star stud players, and and really quick, California, Southern California, I know 
we, we've had some success with some kids out there. Mm-hmm. We've had the best tight end in program history come out of mm-hmm. one Napa. country mm-hmm. in, in California. We have consistently Kendall Milton running backs out of mm-hmm. the Valley. Mm-hmm. We have we, skill position players that can burn coming out of California. Yep. That's where he has his roots and ties. Daniel, mm-hmm. the most five stars next to it's it's Florida, Georgia, Texas, California. Those are the states with the most five stars. And we just got the dude yep. who has the most connections to five star talented kids on the West Coast in California yep. than any other position coach in the nation. So but Clint, it's a grand slam. But Clint, yeah. what about the fact that he was most recently the coach of a defense that, as you said, was laughably bad. I'm talking about yeah. laughably bad. Yeah. Am should I not be up in arms about the fact that he's bringing that joke of a soft mindset to the University of Georgia, and that that's going to infiltrate our defense? Uh, two things, really quick. Let me start with some statistics on him. Last year, USC had the lowest passing yards it has had in ten in a decade. In one decade, passing yards was, allowed. Passing yards allowed. Mm-hmm. When he was coaching defensive backs at USC. Well, that's now, interesting. Okay, so let's remember that. Even though everybody could do whatever they wanted against the defensive line and linebackers, the DBs held their own in the Pac-12. And if you're going to say to me, "Oh, the Pac-12, that's not real football," Oregon and Washington, yep. UCLA. Chip Kelly. So slow Oregon state, even like legit teams. Okay. Second thing. Um, I don't mean to disparage our new coach already. I'm not trying to talk about coach Williams and negative lights, but is he, is he the DBs coach officially? Is he really coaching the DBs? Really? Or is there somebody who's above him? Really? That has a better, well, what does he know about defensive backs? Well, he, he's, what is, just, he's just coached all of them and got mm-hmm. them in the league and played them to historic levels in the SEC. Kirby Smart's the yeah. defensive back coach. He's the defensive mastermind. Coach Williams comes in. He gets to recruit, and he gets to hang out with corners. Kirby's going to take safety. He's going to be passing game coordinator on the defensive side with shoe. And Coach Williams has a beautiful setup. I mean beautiful setup. This not works in UGA's favor. It works in his favor to the nth degree. We'll talk more about this as we move as we move throughout the offseason th- this higher but I, I, I'm in agreement with you Clint. I've I was told the same thing about Fran Brown by the way Thank when he you. came to Georgia. I was told the previous the team that he previously coached on didn't want him anymore. Couldn't yeah. wait to get rid of him. Couldn't believe that they were able to offload him onto the University of Georgia. Uh, what did he do? Did Fran Brown do anything on the recruiting trail? Did he bring anybody in? Did he have any success at the position that he coached? Guys like Malachi Starks and Ooh. oh, bringing bringing those guys in. Okay, so um, number one corner in the nation in the signing class this year for sure. us coming in. Okay. Yeah, that's all fine. So listen, I don't want to hear it about this. You said it at the top. This is a talent acquisition situation. It's all and. It is. I'm sorry for the people out there that don't like to think about college football as a business, but we've already talked to you. Um, You're you're done. It's over. Move along. Pick a new sport. Uh, It's talent acquisition. That's what Dante Williams is in the in the in the job Mm. of. And um, he's quite good at that. And that will bode well for the University of Georgia, who, by the way. Has lost a couple safeties in these last couple classes, lost a couple DBs in these last couple classes, has some guys that. We wanted that we did yeah. not get yes. guys like Caleb Downs, guys like KJ Bolden. We'll see if you know. We'll see if he maintains that commitment to FSU or not. But guys that we've gone after that we did not end up getting, and so um, uh, it's it it's a big deal. It's a great hire, and um, I'm happy about it. George is bringing yes. in. Speaking of talent acquisition, George has got some talent coming mm-hmm. in the portal, and we're going to talk about it right after this. 
But this is eBay Motors, ebaymotors.com, the right part, the right fit, the right prices. eBay guaranteed fit is only available for U.S. customers. And if that's you, guess what? You put the make, the model, the year of your vehicle into eBay Motors. You go perusing, just going down the inventory list. You're what if you want some head new in there? LED headlights? What mm -hmm. if hypothetically, Daniel, you go to the hardware store and that two by four just comes sliding all the way through and hits the front windshield of your car? It's it's never happened to me personally. I couldn't sure. imagine what it would be like if it did. But if it did happen to you, where would you go? You, I'd go to eBay Motors. They got there everything you. that you need. The, everything that you need. Pop in, make, model. Every single part that you go ahead and look for in the inventory will be guaranteed to fit. If it doesn't, eBay is going to take care of you. They're going to make, make sure you get the right part, the right fit, the right prices. eBayMotors.com. eBay guarantee fit only available for U.S. customers. All right, Clint, let's talk about the transfer portal. Um, uh, London Humphreys, Vanderbilt Ooh. wide receiver coming in. Georgia fans know him because he caught a 50-yard touchdown pass against us last year. Um, uh, he hits the portal for Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt wide receivers, by the way, were really good. London Humphreys wasn't even the best wide receiver on that team last year. Yeah. Um, really good wide receivers um, that they had. He's in the portal. Reports are... Coming to Athens, Georgia's picked him up. 22 catches last year for 439 yards, averaging 20 yards a catch. Four That's touchdowns, um, multiple catches over 50 yards. And I think a lot of people, I'm going to be totally honest. I'm going to be very, be very transparent here. Hit him in the feels for a moment. There's a lot of casuals out there who are going to just look at London Humphrey's picture and say the words, Lad McConkey 2.0. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's why old Clemson running back, like little, little Clemson dude running back was called Christian McCaffrey 2.0, even though his game resembles Christian McCaffrey's in zero way. No way. At Shipley is not, does not have the, the actual that McCaffrey does but casuals are going to look at the picture of London Humphreys and yeah. they're going to say they're going to say this is an effort to replace Lad McConkey but I'm here to tell you that um 6'3 185 pounds long athletic great mm -hmm. route runner fast long strider like this is not the shifty quick in and out mover that Lad McConkey was this is a down the sideline, big play, run away from the defense, go up and get a contested ball type of wide receiver in London Humphrey. Um, this is a great pickup for the University of Georgia. I know Georgia's got some talented wide receivers. We're certainly, we're certainly deep at that position. We brought in two last year. They both contributed significantly. I expect it to be the same thing this year. I expect Humphrey to contribute significantly right away for Georgia. Absolutely. Daniel, that's if you look at him, he is taller, he is leaner. He is going to be more in the more on the side, not exactly of a of a Rosemi. Jack Saint, like like that is more his build than Lad McConkey. I don't think he, I, I'm not saying he is. I'm just saying on the spectrum. Yeah. It's easy to look. He is a burner as well. You saw him going down the middle of the field. You've seen him in games have 100 yard games he started off the season UNLV with one of those games. This dude can ball. He's a freshman. He's got years of eligibility. He was a three star kid coming out of Tennessee, uh, stayed in Nashville, stayed home, made a name for himself, second on the team in receptions at Vanderbilt. And now he comes into Georgia and I think he slots perfectly into the rotation. I, I think middle of the field, still his game. I think he's, he is mm -hmm. a slot, but he's not only a slot as in shifty and quick that, that Wes Welker or, or Lad McConkey. I think he is somebody that can go on the outside and do a 50, 50 ball in the end zone. Daniel, this is, I, I said, Rosemary Jack Saint more on his end, but this is more AD Mitchell. He's not to the skill level. Okay. Like hear me, Georgia fans. Sure. I am not calling him the next AD Mitchell. Please stop. I, I'm not AD Mitchell's a stud. He's more on that side that he can do any of the route tree. He can go out and get it, and he could burn past the DBs as we've seen. Um, he, he's a complete package. Yeah, maybe, maybe the ceiling's not as high as other guys, okay? But 
but he's a complete wide receiver. He's not a one trick pony. No, a hundred percent. And you, it's good because that's the guy that Georgia needs. Dylan Bell, great, versatile weapon playmaker. Ra Ra Thomas proved himself, but you know, losing Roseme, and obviously you got Oscar Delp, but you presume losing Brock Bowers. Yeah. Georgia's losing a lot of its size, physicality. This this type of, you know, that's not who Dom Lovett is. That's no. not who, like, that's not who. Evans is going to come in and be next year when he gets significant minutes, you know, at wide receiver, which he will next year. Like these are, these are these slot type of players. And you, sure. You have guys that can go on the outside in Dylan Bell and Ra Ra mm -hmm. Thomas, but even those guys, you know, six, one, six, two, a little bit like six foot in the case of Dylan Bell, like a little bit, undersized for a true outside wide receiver this guy's all of six three he's got long yes. arms he can go up and reach for the football like he's he's lean he's much mm -hmm. leaner than marcus rosemey but he's but he's fast and he's explosive he's got big playability he's got contested catchability i love this pickup for mike bobo in the offense i love it for continuity with Carson back next year and um I love I love it in terms of Georgia being able to pull in a really talented guy out of the portal don't think Georgia is anywhere near done pulling no. guys out of the portal and so stay tuned for that but we are going to talk about Carson Beck because it um significant to some here was he's a little dead. loyal third segment listeners mm -hmm. come on back okay because we're we're going to discuss Raiola news, all of you who are in the Twitter feed just blasting the kid, just pump, pump the brakes a little bit. Maybe okay. hit the pause button. Maybe we're, we're gonna talk about it because as of right now, this recording, Daniel, he ain't no news. Well, out. he went to Nebraska, he came home from Nebraska, and then still what? still no. is a Georgia commit right now. No news. Oh, interesting. Okay, that's wild. Um well, that we're gonna talk about that as well as Carson Beck for the next year right after this. All right, Clint, where should we start? 199's here. Third segment mm. are here. We're all having a good time Craig's here. out here. Craig's part of the one. Craig's out here. You no, love Craig. He might be hosting his own podcast um, at this no, point. And he so... actually, news broke, hired control, all, offensive control analyst for UGA. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. That is great. Well, good for him. Can't good wait to him. watch the improvement of the, <laughs> I think, number six rated offense in the country. How dare Last you? year. How dare you? It needs to be one. I won't. Well, we're all cheering for it to be number one, but we just don't know if it's going to get there. We're trying sure. to we're trying to build that pyramid up to number one, but you know we'll see. We'll see if we ever get one ninety nine. We do this podcast for you guys. Trust us. This is the this is the type of this is the part of the season in which Daniel and I hop on the mics and we say, you know what, we're gonna we're gonna do this for one ninety nine. It's only for. it's only you that keeps that that keeps this thing going during the offseason. You understand that it's only <laughs> it's only you. Um, it's always been you. Hit us hit us up on the email uh, lockdownbulldogs at gmail.com. Let us know what you want to hear us talk about. We've gotten several ideas from you. We're filing those away. Yep. It's obviously off season news time. You know we got signing day stuff. Like we got recruiting stuff coming up. We're going to do a recruiting show later in the week. We've got portal news we've got coaching news like so there's a bunch of stuff to cover right now but it's a long off season keep hitting us up via email um and we would love to talk about all that um dylan riola mm -hmm. went to nebraska didn't enroll at georgia as was expected of him but as of right now still committed to georgia and so um I don't expect Dylan Raiola to play quarterback at the University of Georgia. I don't expect him to come. But it just goes to show you, um, shut up. There it like, is. Just, just shut up. This is the biggest takeaway. We're not We're not breaking news. No. Again, he's still committed to Georgia. No announcement has been made in the contrary. He is not enrolled in Georgia. So it, he's mulling some things maybe. And if, if I am a betting man, which Daniel and I are, we would bet that he goes to Nebraska. He's got 4 million, 3 million waiting in the, in the hands in a briefcase somewhere on a tarmac mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got family and connections. And he goes and be a, a dude up there. That's our, that's our bet. But 
this is the point. Even Many if people, we're right, uh huh. Shut up. Shut up. Like just stop talking. If you're if you're gonna get out there and disparage a child on social media as a grown air quotes man, maybe I, don't. Maybe don't do that. Maybe Let's don't. talk about another grown man who is currently enrolled at Georgia and is currently on campus at Georgia and is currently going through bowl practices and is going to play. Okay, all of that's in the bowl great. game. That's so right. fantastic. You said in the open, yeah, bowl game can help your draft stock. I am going to now, at this point, directly refute you. Here we go. Thank you, Daniel. Talk, talk me. I'm, I'm embodying Georgia fan. Here's, here's Georgia fan that you need to talk off the ledge. Carson Beck said he was going to be in the bowl game. He made no mention of next year. And it's weird because if you're going to be there for bowl practice, you're going to go through the process and then you're going to go uh, into the draft. You and announced that said we're still, you know, still that's all later. We're not thinking about that. We're right? not thinking about so, that. Yeah. But it would also make sense that if you're going to go through the bowl, you're going to be with your teammates and you're going to come back next year. Now would be a fantastic time to say that as portal, as recruiting, as all of this is about to hit, you would imagine. So, so no news seems weird to me. And if I'm Georgia fan, I'm embodying the, the energy. I'm thinking to myself, he's going to the bowl. He's going to make a name for himself there. He had a bad showing in the SEC championship game. He doesn't want that to be the bad, the last taste in the mouths of GMs of the NFL. He's got prototypical everything. And I, I can come back and maybe try to go for a Heisman race or maybe get my draft stock over, or I can just go get a signed bonus guaranteed and start my NFL career. Why am I wrong as Georgia fan when I say that, Daniel? Well, the bowl game is doing nothing for Carson Beck in terms of his NFL draft stock. It's doing absolutely nothing. Playing against an, a, a decimated Florida State defense with opt-outs and right. you know like it, this is first of all the Florida State defense is no joke but and I don't I don't know which of these things are being reported or whatever but I, I'll just tell you Jared Verse is not playing in this bowl game no like George Florida State's defensive front is going to have it is going to is going to be a shell of what it once was and it of course you know Jerry Verse is going to be a top five pick just like Brock Bowers and so you're not going to play in this bowl game of course you're not because the bowl game against a non team in a non college football playoff environment is not going to do anything for you if NFL scouts have already seen everything that they need to see from Carson Beck they're not looking at wins and losses they're not looking at one game statistics in the SEC championship game. And NFL GMs have proven to us over and over and over and oh over gosh. again that they care way more about combines and interviews and bench press and 40-yard dash and a bunch of crap that has nothing to do with actually playing football games. So why would you come back, risk injury, and play in another football game when you could just go prep and do all of that stuff? Carson Beck is gaining nothing by playing in this bowl game. The only reason... Okay. To Thank come you. back and play in this bowl game is either A, you are coming back to Georgia next year and there's no reason not to play in this bowl game because it's more opportunity to throw passes to Rara Thomas, more opportunity to gain some continuity with Roderick Robinson and the new offensive line and all these guys. Like that's that's reason A. Reason B is you just love your teammates so much. That you yeah. do not want to, you can't imagine the the feeling of them taking the field and you not being out there with them. Now, option B is a possibility okay. for Georgia, but I'm just here to tell you, and Georgia fans, you're not going to like this. So I'm not. Don't think I'm. I'm telling you, I think Carson Beck's coming back, but I'm going to say it in a way. Point, I was going to give it to you point blank. So your prediction is that he's. I back think next Carson year. Beck's coming back, but okay. but the way I'm going to explain it to you, you're not going to care for. Carson Beck is not saying he's coming back yet because Carson Beck is waiting on the money to make sense to come back. Carson Beck is waiting on the same oh. thing Dylan Riola is waiting on Thank and you. the same thing that the same reason that Ohio State quarterback went to Syracuse. It's not because Fran Brown is the savior messiah of the world. It's because he went and got that bag. It's the same reason that Quinn Ewers is doing what Quinn Ewers is. It's the same reason that everybody's making every decision that everyone is making in college football 
That's what college football is now. It's all about money. So and if you don't like it, uh -huh. again, go find a new sport. It just watch Little League baseball. You, you literally are trying to put out a five alarm forest fire with a super soaker by like peeing on it. Like that's what you're doing. It's do not, it. So it's, the train has left the station. It reforms coming in this. I I'm fully anticipating regulation on it, but college football is, is never going to be what it was six, seven, eight years ago. Even this is okay? in no way a disparaging statement about Carson Beck. Please hear no. me say that not Thank in you. any way. Carson Beck is waiting for more money. That's why he's not telling you that he's coming back to school because he's waiting for more money. Do you know who else would like more money at their job? You. You would like more money at your job. This is this is the equivalent of... It's just that Carson Beck has enough talent to actually yes. get more money at his yes. job. And you, yes. well... This is a negotiation tactic. And again, if you don't... It, he's saying, yeah, I'll be there for the bull practice. While he's staring at at donors and boosters right in the camera and saying, that's all I'm going to give you right now. You want more? Come talk to me in the form of actually giving me money that I could be going over here. And if it doesn't make sense, then I will go over here. And, and all of you text thumb warriors who are mm -hmm. blasting Dylan. Do, now you go blast Carson Beck. If you're the people that were blasting see, right the away, thing is, is you that after, must also blast Beck. After us saying this, people are going to blast Carson Beck in the comments. This is the thing that the the most hypocritical Georgia fans in the world who spend seven hundred thousand dollars annually on their tailgates and don't want Carson Beck to hold like to hold out for a hundred thousand dollar NIL deal so that it can be worth his while to come back to school and play another season for Georgia and put his long-term future in the NFL on hold so that he could like, it's the most ridiculous nonsense. People, people again are just longing for a day that is gone. It's over and it's done with, there is going to be regulation and reform coming. Of it's not going to be is. chip Kelly's regulation and reform. Although I thought, that's a pretty dang good idea, but was sound it's that's why it's not going to happen because it was sound. It was logical. It made sense. <laughs> College football. I'm not arguing with you that it's broken. Okay. I'm that's not the argument I'm having. If you want to say it's broken, I will happily allow you to say that. Sure. But it, it is what it is. It doesn't make the fact that Carson Beck wants money that he can get that is that is available to him. The fact that he wants it makes him literally the exact same as every other person you know. So, do you see how that works? Let's not let's not just throw a bunch of rocks at a kid for wanting more money and act like he's hamstringing the program. By the way, it's like oh my it's gosh, not, stop, stop that nonsense! It's ridiculous! It's ridiculous! Uh, I think he's and, coming back though, and that's all that really matters. He is Daniel. I am Clint. This is Locked on Bulldogs. We're going to be back later on this week talking all manner of transfer portal. We got commit watch. We got so oh, pet, many. Heads are got, falling off. Pets heads are falling off. We got we got guys leaving. We got guys coming in. We're going to talk about that recruiting. The whole smorgasbord is out there. When news breaks, you'll hear it from us. He is Daniel. I am Clint. Locked on Bulldogs. We will see you guys later this week. See ya.